I don't think that there's many people in cycling who would say that the introduction of the biological passport over the last eight years or so has been a negative thing. But there are some people that say that the UCI shouldn't be in charge of anti-doping tests full stop. What's your opinion on this? It's quite simple. We have said for many years we would love to have to be able to give it to an independent agency. But the World Anti-Doping Code, the WADA Code, doesn't allow that. The World, the World Anti-Doping Code act, actually states that every international federation must be and is responsible for its anti-doping and its international events. What we have done is we've created the, the CADF, the, anti, the, the, the Cycling Anti-Doping Foundation, and that's separate to the UCI and operates separately to the UCI. And step by step, we're, you know, and I, I, I would admit now today that it's not completely independent of the UCI, but step by step we are bringing in measures to further distance it from the UCI. And that really, within the code at the moment, is as far as we can go. I think it's fair to say that the UCI and yourself have come in for a fair amount of criticism, especially over the last six months or so. What is it that keeps you motivated and positive about the future of the sport and staying in this role? I love the sport. I'm passionate about sport. I have been all my life and I've, I've worked for this sport all my life and I continue to work for this sport and continue to travel wor the world. As I told you before, uh, before we started the interview, in the past seven days I've been on nine airplanes um, and that's to go and help and, and meet people to develop the sport. Um, I also am very much aware that the sport has changed dramatically since 2005, since I became president. The, 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 what we're dealing with in the whole Lance Armstrong affair and so forth is activities that took place 10 and 15 years ago um, when there was a product around which could not be tested for. And I don't believe that the responsibility is solely on the UCI's shoulders for the fact that they, those riders weren't, or those athletes weren't caught. There are other agencies like WADA, like USADA, like AFLD, who also tested the athletes and didn't catch them. So the responsibility shouldn't all be lie on, on the UCI's shoulders. Having said that, that's, that was the past and the UCI is dealing now with the present and with the future. And the peloton today, if you talk to the riders, talk to team officials and so forth, talk to media who are close to it, they all recognise that the, that the peloton has changed and that it's a much, more, a much fairer sport, cleaner sport. And that's what, that, what drives me on. I think the current riders are really crying out for a way to prove to the journalists and to the public in general that they're doing this sport clean, but there's really nothing that hasn't been said by other riders, namely Armstrong before, which they can say now. There's been an idea come from Michael Ashenden which he was unable to tell us about at the Chain Cycling Now conference. He seemed to have an idea of how they could do this, but has the UCI got any ideas to let a rider prove 100% that he's clean? I think that in, in the past uh, four or five, six years, our st the sport of cycling has, has made major changes. The athletes, we have a thousand athletes in the registered testing pool. We do something like 13,000 tests a year, seven and a half million euros spent in, on, on anti-doping. And the athletes do it willingly. It's not easy for them to do. They would fill in their whereabouts 24 hours a day, three months in advance. But they do it and do it willingly for the sport, for the love of the sport and for the, the, you know, the success of the sport. And it's, it's, those, it, it's working for those athletes today that motivates me to keep going. Other sports aren't under anything like the same type of microscope we're under. And at the end of the day, it's down to the, it's down to the authorities who are responsible for anti-doping, WADA, that's not the UCI, WADA to come up with new, with new, uh, new ways of, of catching the cheats. And the UCI has always been one of the first international federations to introduce a new measure. We will continue to, to do so. We will continue to work with science. Uh, what is already working with the pharmaceutical industry, we will continue working with them and working with science to, to, to catch the cheats and, and to, to work for, for clean athletes. I, th I think the credibility is back now anyway. I mean, the sport's in a very, very good place. And um, when you look at w London last year, one and a half million people on the roadside for the Olympic Games road race, biggest crowd in the history of the Olympic Games for any Olympic Games event. Uh, the track was absolutely amazing, the atmosphere on the track mountain bike and BMX. Our sport is in a very good position. The, there, were, there were, you know, sort of veiled threats made about the possibility of cycling going out of the Olympic Games programme. The executive board of the IOC met in, in Lausanne two weeks ago. There wasn't one vote against cycling in that executive committee meeting. So it's, it's cycling is still very strongly associated with, with the Olympic Games. 
does a lot and brings a lot to the Olympic Games. We're even looking to bring in more events and even more disciplines into, into future Olympic Games. So I think the, 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 the sport is there in a, in, in a healthy position. Um, once, we, once we continue, as I say, to work with the, with the federations and our stakeholders today going forward, and that's why the importance of the stakeholders' consultation is very important for us. It's uh, something I, we probably should have done maybe five or six years ago. Um, and, you know, but anyhow, we're, we're, we're doing it now, and it'll be, it's a very interesting process, very interesting to, to see and hear all the ideas and try to compile all those and, and get them into some sort of order so that we can move the sport forward the way, the, the, the way that all of the stakeholders want us to do.